Greetings and welcome to my favorite tech tool tutorial. Today I will be sharing how I use Google Form for parent contact forms, specifically for documenting student behavior, positive and negative. Today we're going to look closely at Google Forms and what I would like to bring your attention to are some of the things that I currently use Google Forms for. And as you can see, um, Google has updated their Google Forms application over the years and there are a variety of things you can do. Exit tickets, assessment, worksheets, so it's a teacher's fan favorite. I want to scroll down here so you can see a couple things. Parent contact, um, and we also use this when I do learning walks. Um, also, when I check for student self-reflections, sometimes during my mileage, I use it for a variety of things. Um, student learning inventories, uh, needs assessment for teachers and students, so you can use it for everything. But tonight, I'm going to focus on how I use Google Forms, specifically for documenting student behavior and making contact with their parents. I'm going to go over here to my parent contact form and just give you an overview of what it looks like. So of course you have basic information like the time, the date. Um, also during the school year I like to break it into four quarters or however your school district does quarters or semesters. Of course the student name, your method of parent contact via phone, email, text message, or any other applications that may, you may use for parent engagement. And then of course the reason for contact, praise, behavior concern, behavior concerns, skills progress, and absence concerns. And then I go a little deeper into actually specifying what the behavior concerns are. And as you can see, disruptive, insubordinate, disrespectful. So a lot of these things are similar to what you would see on something that we use in our district called PS74, or just a documentation form for a citation that we normally send to uh, an administrative referral. I also have on here a behavior intervention that was actually implemented. These are the things that I did when I addressed the behavior. And so just being able to check these things off. I even have something like lunch with the teacher. Then of course, um, other concerns that is very specific to the student's need. So what I like most about using Google Forms as a parent contact behavior form is looking at the data. As with all Google Forms, <laughs> the data makes it very nice to look at when I'm having parent conferences, or during an administrative conference with my lead administrator or my principal in my building. It's just good for them to see how the data is broken down specifically. So of course here I have the date and the times, you know, when I'm calling. Um, I like this most because here I can see how often am I making parent contact. <clears throat> and as you can see, most of it here was in second quarter, some was in third quarter, and I'm sure it probably should have been a lot during first quarter. So hopefully not too much during the fourth quarter as you come down here. And then here, there's a pie chart explaining my method of parent contact. Clearly, I make a lot of phone calls. I like to connect with parents. Um, however, parents have preferences, you know, sometimes emails or text messages. So here is where all of that data can be captured. Then also the reason for contact, you know, and here it says 0% for praise, but this is important. We want to make sure that we're equally making parent contact for praise as much as we are about behavior concerns in addition to skill progress and of course if we're having any absence concerns. Um, this is a form that's not complete. This has only been used for a short period of time with one of my teachers. So we don't see much data here regarding the reasons for contact. So, but again, hopefully um, once you're collecting data, you'll see a variety of um, reasons that you've made contact and hopefully they're not all for bad things, but also some positive things around praise. Here, um, we start looking a little more closely at what the specific behaviors are. And by having this data, you can really start targeting interventions when you start looking at the number of kids versus the number of specific behaviors being exhibited in your classroom. And then finally, um, we look at what interventions I'm using and if I'm using enough or if I need to use more, or need to use more of a variety. And down here at the bottom, of course, we just have um, other concerns where we're very specific as to what we're doing. So um, here at the bottom gives a lot of information about specific things relative to that student. So this is an example of how this is used. I'm going to scroll back up here and now we're going to get right to it and we're going to actually practice creating one. So once you go into your Google application, whether that is Gmail or any other Google application, I would like you to locate your G Suite icon. And this is for your Google Suite icon. And as you can see, it says Google Apps to the top right. And if you click on it, you can then go down and scroll down further. 
and click on forms. Once you click on forms, voila, you can be begin creating your own Google form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a blank one here and I'm going to begin creating a form. Now for the sake of this short tutorial, we're going to get right to the point and just put in some basic information. So for example, the first thing I want to put in is a date. I know I'm going to need a date. I'm going to go over here to this menu of buttons here where it says I can add a question. Here I can also add a title and description. I can also add images, video clips, and I can add in a, a broken section. So when I'm on my Google form, the first thing I want to do is I want to name it. And we're going to name this one sample parent contact form. And then normally that name will populate into this form here. If you want to include a description, you can do that there. And we'll just put tutorial for tonight. But this description can be very specific to your needs as to what you will be creating your Google form for. So I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to clarify this and put the date because I want to be clear that this is where we're putting the date. Now I'm going to go to my second question and I'm going to click on the add button because now I want to add another section. And here I'm going to put time. I want to know what time I call the parents um, to see the best time that I can call after school or during the school day. Okay. Now I'm also going to click on my plus symbol again and I'm going to go down and I'm going to continue to add in specific information. What quarter were we in? I'm going to put, you know, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. And if your school or district is by semesters, then that's fine. So I'm going to have that there with my quarters. Okay. And then I'm going to go down. I'm also going to add information like method of contact. Okay, and will this be by telephone? Will this be by Remind 101? Email, some parents like to be emailed. Class Dojo. <laughs> So whatever it is that you're using, you know, again, you customize it to your needs. And again, I'm going to go back and click the add button. My next question, what is the reason that I'm contacting a parent for today? Reason for contact. <clears throat> and again, I'm a believer in being balanced. So I'm going to say praise. And I'm, con I'm contacting parents to share great news with their child today. And that should be just as frequent as any other thing. Or is there a behavior concern? Okay. I'm going to hit the plus button again, and then um, I'm then going to talk about what interventions I'm using with this particular student so that when I talk to the parent, you know, I can share with him or her, this is what I'm doing so far, you know, please share with me what you may do at home, what can I do better. It's all about just collaborating and learning. So here, of course, you can give a verbal warning. Um, behavior intervention, I may send a student to the Peace Corner. That's like more, normally my color therapy desk. <laughs> but giving them an option to have a moment to get it together. Um, and any other interventions that you may have. I'm going to scroll down. And then I'm also going to see if there are any other concerns. I'm just going to put other here. And I am going to change my option here to paragraph format. So there may be just a short answer. If there's something I need to type in the text, that can go there. So as I go down here, you have the option to duplicate a question. If I hit this button, it says duplicate, and it will make that question a second time. Now, I don't really need that, so I'm going to go to the trash can and hit delete. Now, this button here that says required, I'm going to go to each question, and I'm going to click on the required button. That way, as I'm filling out the form, it will ensure that I complete it thoroughly to retain the best data that I can get using this form. So once I have made all of these questions required or mandatory, I think I'm all ready to go. Errors, and I look at my title to see if it's what I want. I can go here and look at this color palette. I can make it really fancy. Purple is pretty neutral, but let's go with blue. Blue is always soft and easy on the eyes. Um, actually, I like the other blue. Let's try this one. <laughs> it's a little brighter. And then you have this little gear, which are your settings. 
in here they give you some options as to how you can do it you can limit your responses to one person you can give um, the respondents or participants an option to edit after they submit <clears throat> and in this case this is for you so maybe you want to be able to have the option to go back and edit what you've submitted on a form so I'm going to go back there and this is for general purposes today if you're using this for a presentation or quizzes there will be something different and you could explore those options there but today we're going to stay in the general column because we're making this for ourselves as a tool as an educator this little button here that says preview this will give us a preview of what the live form looks like I'm going to click on that voila it shows me what this looks like when I go to fill this out now if you're a department chair or lead teacher maybe you can share this with your teammates and they can use it with their classes this button here is the edit button to edit the form now these three dots here give you a couple options you can make a copy of this and send this to colleagues and they can create it to their needs you can put it in the trash you can also obtain an actual link for this you can print you can also add a collaborator so if I am the science department chair, maybe I want to share this with my social studies department chair. I would just click on add collaborators and I would type in a colleague's name and I would give them rights to be able to go in and utilize this as necessary. This button here talks about the options to edit or just to view. So I'm going to go back here and I'm double checking my form to see if it's what I want. And I think it looks pretty good. And I'm going to hit done. So now I want to send this to myself or a colleague, someone I'm close with, and this is what this is going to look like. So I am going to email this to myself and um, just going to test this out or email this to any other colleagues. You can also include this in the email. So if you want this form to show up in the email where you can fill it out in the email, you can use that as an option. And I'm then going to hit send. That will then populate to my email and I will have access to this. This will also appear in your Google Suite under your forms application where you will see that you have created this. And I just want to go back here to the sample title. If you see this button here to ask you, do you want to move this to a folder? So if I want to really specifically organize it, I can organize it for where I want this to go. And clearly I have several folders, <laughs> several spools, but I would put it in the right place accordingly for me or I could just leave it in my drive. There's also a star button here. I'm going to star this because it will be marked and identified as something that's really important, almost like a bookmark for me. And now I have it. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how I use one of my favorite tech tools via Google Forms for contacting parents and documenting behavior concerns and behavior praise uh, for our students. So again, having great data, being able to analyze that data and share with students makes all the difference. Just want to go back here and take a closer look at our data again. This data is not just for you or just for you to share with colleagues, but for you to also talk with your students about this. Have your students to dissect and analyze what this looks like and, you know, and ask them, hey, what does this mean to you? You can turn this into an activity. Now, of course, you want to be mindful of privacy and not necessarily show everybody's name or what they're doing, but you can take bits and pieces of the data and turn this into a learning opportunity with your students. So that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I hope that you enjoyed this. Feel free to contact me if you need any further assistance.